demo today is going to be covering ORAN front hall. And what we're also going to be doing as part of this is we're going to be demonstrating some interesting techniques which can be used in deployment in an active network. Um, and that's what we call passive port monitoring and profile interworking. And we're going to see them being used live. So first of all, I'll give a quick one minute through of the equipment that was used in this. Uh, the first thing we have is a time sync analyzer from Keysight, which is being used as the grandmaster and also as a device to measure the time error between the various clocks in the network. And we'll see that in the topology. We also have a Paragon Neo, um, which is also being used to measure the, the relative time offset between uh, two nodes in the network. Uh, we also have a time provider from Microchip that's been used as a primary reference time clock. What does that mean? It means it's taking a simulated GNSS signal and it is producing a 10 megahertz frequency and a time of day, uh, which has been used by the Grand Masters. We also have from Calnex an SNE Ignite device, and that's been used to introduce some asymmetry into a network link so that you can see us measuring the asymmetry and then how we can then look to remove that asymmetry if we have it in the network. Uh, as part of the topology, we have six boundary clocks uh, from six different vendors. So uh, from Cisco, from, from my company, we have an NCS 540, we have an ATN 910 from Huawei, and a 7280 from Arista. These are all acting as boundary clocks using G.80275.1 profile as well as synchronous Ethernet. We also have a PTX 10002 from Juniper. Again, a boundary clock and an Ericsson 6676. Again, PTP using as a um, uh, 75.1 profile and synchronous Ethernet. To add profile interworking between PTP over IP and PTP layer 2, we have a uh, Sienna is acting as a, as a uh, 75.2 slave. So it's not getting sinky, but it's also participating in the network. So this might make all a bit more sense if we see a topology. Uh, what we have here is we have a ring of, uh, let me get a little pointer. We can get a ring. So here we have the microchip, which is providing the, um, the 10 megahertz and the time of day. The key site device is acting as a grand master and it is also measuring uh, the input coming back from the devices so that it can measure the difference between the input and what's coming back from the network. Similarly, the Paragon Neo is also measuring the time that's coming from um, the Juniper device and the Ericsson device. And at the end of the network, we have Keysight, which is then going to measure the absolute time error and the relative time error between my, uh, the Cisco device and the Sienna device. So all these links here are generally 100 giggy links. There are only two differences. Between the Huawei and the Juniper, we have a 10 gig link. And what we're doing is we put 540 nanoseconds of impairment on that link. So we have asymmetry in one direction, which will naturally introduce a timing error. And we can see the results of that. Um, this is all running the 75.1 profile, except for the line in green between Ericsson and Sienna which is running 75.2, which is PDP over IP profile. The Ericsson is going to be doing an interworking function, turning 75.1 into 75.2. Um, there is no sync E running across this link, so we're going to see a bit of natural variability in the clock, and you'll see that on the results. The other thing to point out is that we have a, um, a Sienna DWDM de device connecting the Juniper and the Cisco, we're connected at 400 gig E using ZR plus optics. Uh, we have a DWDM system in one of those links, which we're using as the major timing signal. And we also have a second 400 gig E link between the two devices, which is being, uh, it was a direct dark fiber. So what we can do is measure any, um, any offset between the DWDM link and the uh, direct link. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Bjorna from uh, Juniper, who will take you through the next steps. Bjorna. Thank you. So my name is Bjorna Fortin from Juniper. So I will show you uh, the results on the PTX as the boundary clock. So as Dennis said, it's two things to be 
of aero in the in the topology here. What you will see is that we have configured it to, to lock to the Arista boundary clock. And we have the passive port monitoring running on the link uh, between the SNE Ignite down to the Huawei. So I will show you how we measure it. And as Dennis said, we add in an asymmetry of 540 nanoseconds. So I will really showcase the use of passive port monitoring in the network to really measure the offsets. And as Dennis said, is the 400 gig setup plus, and he will kind of show the measurement on his passive port monitoring on the Cisco device. But there is running the two devices there. So, so if you if you start on the PTP side, you see that we are face aligned to the ET000, which is the 100 gig up to the Arista, and. To showcase what Dennis said, that we are running on um, on a hybrid status, so we see that we are frequency locked and face locked on that 100 gig. So it means PTP and sync is locked up there. Um, to really see now the next step here, to um, have the old master. So this shows the ET00 on the bottom here. So it shows that we're getting the PTP packets from the Arista that they're looking to, but they're also getting the PTP packets on the ET0024, which is a 10 gig here. So, so we are receiving both of them, but that is a passive port. So if you then look here now on this passive port monitoring here, so we see down here the phase offset measurement from master is minus 273 nanoseconds. It means that that's the difference on the time error between the passive port monitoring adding 500 non, 540 nanosecond of asymmetry compared to the device, the, the port that we locked on the Arista. So this is a very nice tool to really measure the quality that we have on different ports and finding offset between different ports in, in a timing network. So by that I will hand over to Neil from uh, Calnex. Hi, thank you. So I'm Neil from Calnex. Um, as Bjornar said, as well as having the SNE Ignite in the link here to provide the asymmetry that the, pass the passive port is monitoring, we also have a Paragon Neo connected to measure both the absolute time error on the Juniper and Ericsson relative to the Keysight Master, and as well as the absolute, the relative time error between those two measurements. So we can see what the effect of these two hops is when we're looking at the time error on these devices. So if we flick over to the Paragon Neo uh, UI, first we can see here that as Bjornar said, he's locked to the Synchy, the physical layer frequency support from the Grandmaster, and we've got QLPRC on both the Juniper and the Ericsson boxes. So we've got traceability on the physical layer, and we've got a good stable uh, tie measurement as well on the sync key. And that proves that everything's locked as the devices are telling us. If we then look at the PTP time error, we can see here that both for the Ericsson and the Juniper boxes, we're within a few nanoseconds. So our two devices in a chain are performing very, very well in terms of clock synchronization. And we can see that when we look at the difference between them, we can kind of do the maths ourselves, but we can see there, there's about a two nanosecond relative time error between our two clock paths. If we just look at the dynamic version as well, we've actually applied just a single device metric here, and we can see that our performance for our chain is significantly better than even what the standards say for a single device. And that proves how good we're actually achieving synchronization in the network now. So with that, I'll hand back to Dennis, who will tell you about his uh, link. Thank you, Neil. So I'm going to uh, just show you a picture from the Cisco device now and uh, show you that we're receiving time across the 400 gig link. Um, wrong button. OK, so first of all, we can have a look at the frequency synchronization, just to show you that this is all good. Uh, you can see here that we are getting our frequency using synchronous Ethernet across the ZR Plus optics 
and through the, the Sienna DWDM system. Uh, looking at the uh, PTP, uh, again, we are taking our time and phase for across from the 400 gig interface. Um, as well as you can see the other interface, the 400001, that's a direct dark fiber. 000 is the one through DWDM, and we're using the one through DWDM. But you notice here that there's also two devices which are in passive state. And passive state is now going to be used for passive state monitoring. So even though we're not receiving our active reference time across that link, we are receiving the timestamps and we're using them and calculating the offset to see where uh, we are having any you know, asymmetry or issues in the network. So what I can do then is look at the offset. So the first line is like 400 gig E, right? That's my primary reference. Okay, it says minus two nanoseconds at the moment. That will vary a little bit based every set of timestamps. It'll be recalculated, so it will move around a little bit. But you can see also that the dark fiber, we have monitored the timestamps on the dark fiber, uh, 400 gig E, and there you see we're within eight nanoseconds, right? So the relative difference impact that's been put on the link by the Sienna is actually very, very small. What we've also got is a connection to the Sienna device, and the Sienna device is, uh, is the one that's receiving the 75.2. So I can see an offset of about um, 56 nanoseconds with the Sienna, and that will move around a little bit because the Sienna doesn't have the advantage of using Sync E in that uh, mechanism. With that, I'll hand back to Carsten. Thank you so much, Dennis, and the whole team. Amazing collaboration, and uh, Outstanding performance, so 100 nanoseconds. If somebody would have told me this precision could be reached over packet switch networks uh, some time ago, I would have said, like, nonsense. So uh, I think the advancements made here are really great, and please come back for the demo tomorrow.